Welcome to the OHL Fanboys Podcast from Day 5 of the MasterCard Memorial Cup in Windsor, Ontario. I am Steve McLean. Not with us today is Brian Thompson because somebody had to be responsible this week and go to work. So, <laughs> filling in for Brian, you all know this guy, uh, Mike Turney Turnbull. He's the host of our uh, tailgate here. And with us is the voice of the Erie Otters, Mr. Aaron Cooney. Aaron, thank you so much for uh, coming thanks up. Thanks for the... having me. Yeah. Glad it worked out. I got an off day, so I'm tech. this is kind of <laughs> like work for me, but uh, go watch the game later on. You brought the party today. It was just it was just me and Mike out here and Brian's wife, Sky, and then uh, all of a sudden this car comes up and you guys just all came piling out. Uh, that was the, the car, the rental they drove up from Erie. And so the uh, I know the team went to lunch. And I was like, well, I'll come back here to do the thing. So I was like, let's go take the front office staff, grab lunch. We took Brian's suggestion of uh, smoking spice. So it was like right over here. We oh. rolled eight deep into the, the, the <laughs> excursion or expedition, whatever we got. And just and then Mini school stopped bus. up. Yeah, it's pretty much Because <laughs> it pulled up, seats come down, and people just kept pouring out. It was hilarious. Uh, and there's a lot to celebrate for you guys today. Record-setting night it's, last night for the Erie Otters, a 12-5 win. I don't think anyone would have expected that at the Memorial No, Cup. even during the game, I, I was kind of in disbelief that that was happening. I yeah. was like, I know the, we know the Otters can score, but this is a league champion yeah. in Quebec. It was it was really bizarre in the way they kept going. No, Erie, I mean, it was like a, a finely tuned V8 rolling with a full tank of gas. It was wild <laughs> to see what they could do. And yeah, record-setting night. Uh, to the point that I was looking at Otters records as well that they were breaking. It was uh, it was wild. I think someone even mentioned it might have been you. It might have been uh, Vic Fernandez. Uh, Erie, that's the second most goals they've ever scored in a game, and the most they had was 13, oddly enough, here in Windsor in 98. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I was when we were looking up, and I had the, between flipping through the Memorial Cup uh, uh, the media guide and the Otters media guide on my computer, it's like, okay, so where, where are we at here on records for just about everything? Yeah, one shy there, they, they've, they put up 12 before a couple other times, but but for in a Memorial Cup game was uh, was wild. And it's funny they they were tracking it, and Dylan was talking about this today because it was the seven point night that ties an Otters record for single game points with uh, Tyler Renette ninety eight. Oh geez, it's like March eighth, nineteen ninety eight or something. We're going back. So that one. yeah, and, and he ties that. McDavid's had six point nights and. Uh, well, Taylor Radish had a six-point night last night too, but yeah, it was it was wild the the way those they were just executing and uh, well, it was kind of Windsor kind of showed up. It was like, okay, this is what we can do against the Western champion. The was like, okay, we'll see that and we'll raise you over the queue. Yeah, yeah. Did the equipment manager get a point in that game? I, I think everybody did. I was waiting for me to show up on the score yeah. sheet too. I was like, why not? Like, I throw me a second assist here. Well, some of the courts you get after some of the, some of the Otters goals, you must have had a couple points last night too. I think. Uh, I had a I had a few. Got to the point when uh, it was a thing. It was a Taylor Radish goal after right at the end of the second period. It was like, all right. <laughs> I, we get. It. I'm sure the fans get it too. And it was like, and Lodnia scores on the first shot right back in the third period. It's like, okay, I, I guess I can tone it down a little bit here. But it was pretty much in control from there on out <laughs> it wasn't quite like we you know because uh if if you haven't heard the show you know we threw your championship goal call into the the intro of the memorial cup shows here and uh to say it was loud i think is an understatement you're so distorted because the place Dude. just went nuts let's, let's talk about that night we'll go back a little bit first erie otters uh championship in 15 years talk us through that night and how crazy the eia was oh it was just insane to start and you crowd was filling in you could see the uh the only thing that was missing was cowbells one more time but yeah uh, was, the place started to fill in right for warm-ups and there's already let's go otters chance during warm-ups it was already loud before before they even <laughs> began uh so and then uh to, to give up a two nothing lead like right off the bat and just the turnover like it was mitch Byrne just trying to bank it behind the net just a weird bounce off of the zamboni doors and uh well, spencer watson took control and then they go up two nothing and it was like you could tell even that they said it themselves in the locker room. It was like, we can't blow this opportunity. We're yeah. Home ice, we got a, it was over capacity crowd, uh, over 6,700. So, um, yeah, the fire marshals then, probably weren't happy. They were in attendance. They didn't <laughs> yeah, care. They didn't it was care. like, let's get more in here. And just they, they were the guys sitting in the stairs, it. right? <laughs> they were right there watching. But then, uh, no, then they start to come back. And it, it was after, when they could make it a one-goal game, and it was like, third, go to the third period, you knew they were going to tie it up. You, you had the home crowd behind you. Uh, it was just a matter of time. Mississauga got to the point that it was playing not to lose. And yeah. Caught up to him at the end, and once he got to overtime, it was funny because I had a friend that was at the game, and she's like, oh, we're getting, 
We're getting real nervous. Like uh, it was like, don't like relax. Yeah. Anthony Thrill is gonna score, <laughs> and then he did. I, I screenshotted the text message, like the thread, because you just knew once you got to that territory, this guy was gonna show up. And yeah. He always does. He's been huge for you guys in this playoffs. He and, and Warren Fogle. I I was kind of happy to see that Warren Fogle was the guy who walked away with the ninety nine mm-hmm. award because I I thought he had. Obviously, Sorelli had the biggest goal, but Fogel was just such a stud in these playoffs. Oh, he, he showed up time and time again. Even in the uh, I mean, the entire final, if you go and look at what he did and we produced it, he pretty much got this you know, scoring going. Even the first couple of games, uh, he scores opening goal in game one against Mississauga. It's Rome ends up with the uh, with the game winner, just the way Mississauga's going to come back. Same thing in, in, in game two. Warren Fogel scores, and you get the empty netter. It just kind of resulted... Uh, but the brink it gets the game winning goal in game number two. But he kind of got things going for Erie a lot of times, and he had a shorthanded breakaway in just about every game that series. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's where I had. I know the voting came down real close because uh, talked to the guys afterwards, and it was like, yeah, it was all voted by media. So you said, I had the ballot and didn't even do one and two. I just said because it was at the end of the third period, and you knew it was one of those two guys were going to show up. Yeah. So I wrote down Sorelli or Fogel, whoever scores. <laughs> to whoever inflicts, you know, whatever on the on this game here towards the end, yeah. that's my number one vote, and here's number two. So you voted. So for I w- it would have been Sorelli, by yeah. the way. I, the instructions, but if Paul Crotz followed that along, because <laughs> I wrote it on the side real quick. But uh, no, either guy deserving the way they showed up in big games and yeah, we, every time. We got to talk to Crotzy yesterday. Oh. He's a little shifty. I don't know. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then obviously the, the party that ensued, uh, of course, having it in Erie just makes it all sweeter. You, I was listening. I, I was watching on TV. I was listening to your call at the same yeah. time because we're recording for the show. They, they kind of booed you guys off radio pretty quick for a Pirates game. What the hell? <laughs> Dude, I, uh, that was actually that was my call. I made the decision because oh. I, I had to get down there to do interviews. Rogers TV wanted interviews during the broadcast and TV side. Yeah. Um, so that was after like the ceremony and everything that was going on with uh, Dave Branch doing like, the two awards and then they're like, well, we need somebody to do interviews. And I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll run down there and do it. Um, so made the decision to kind of hop off of the, uh, the radio side, but what I really want to do is just get down on the ice and experience that. And it, it sounds loud that it comes over the air and, and even with the overtime goal, and you, you mentioned blew, like it blew out my, my effects, Mike. It was like nuts. Like it just... <laughs> the, the ways go up. But when you get down on the ice, it's even louder. Like, yeah. it was insane to be down there, and Strom takes the trophy for a wheel around the ice. And just the crowd, it was nuts. Like, I, I took a Snapchat video, like, going around, and it was, like, just insane. The the people loved it. It was it was a lot of fun. I'd imagine that's got to be your top moment as far as calling all yeah. these games. <laughs> that was right up there, and even the... I mean, the full goal OT goal against London. That, London, was, that yeah. one, that two. I mean, to, to get two, to, to get two of those to end a series, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to end a series in overtime, like it, that was that was just nuts. Uh, I got lucky enough that those guys gave me that opportunity in, in two different series. So Otters got the day off today, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to rest up any any bumps got a nice schedule. they might have. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If you're an OHL team, you're the only team that has you know a game one day off. You know, there's they never are off for more than two days until we get maybe towards the end here. So we'll we'll get your a little bit of a quick analysis here on what tonight's game is about because you've had a chance to see these teams, Seattle and St. John. Uh, winner plays Friday, losers going home. Uh, what would be your thoughts? Because both these teams are coming off. What would be considering uh, pretty embarrassing losses? Yeah, I don't think you haven't seen the best of either team. Like I don't know, I don't know what to expect here tonight. It, it's it's going to be the first team that can find their game, which every coach, which is, is right. Every coach has said even before you get the, the press conference on Wednesday night, that first day, it's like, oh, we just take care of our own game, we'll be fine. Yeah. But the, those two teams just it seemed they got caught up in the moment. And for St. John last night, I think it was a lot of they were just starstruck themselves by the. Way Erie moved the puck, and they, I don't think they've ever they've seen anything like that uh, in the postseason. But no, for tonight, who's who's going to find their game and, and get to it first is is what I want to see. I think an elimination game maybe that that that, that works a little better for a uh, <laughs> for a uh, uh, you know a dump and chase from Western Hockey League style of game. But uh, Quebec, there's still with St. John, there's still uh, some flashes there at times. They can definitely still move the puck real well. It was impressive. I, I was hoping. I think a lot of people were hoping for a closer game yeah. with these two puck possession style of uh, teams and creative offensively. But uh, no, I um, if Callum Booth can find himself again because that was where yeah. Erie beat him well, four times glove hand side. They really exposed that in the first, and then uh, Kiersey who. 
who they go with in, in between the pipes for, for Seattle as well, yeah. so Stankowski, or go back to Toth. So I, they, they always tip their hand on that side yet, but uh, interested to see how that works out. We'll let uh, Turney get in here a little bit because yeah. now we're going to move on to the we're Spitfire. Just wanted to see it. on my voice. Yeah, he, he's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a good week for the Windsor Spitfires as well. So, you know, the, the, the Spitfires contingent here is a little yeah. hoarse. But, uh, I'm going to stick with Erie still. And, yeah. Uh, take us through your thoughts. I mean, obviously it was a one-sided blow yesterday. But uh, at one point in the game, uh, Timpano had three goals on him and 11 shots. Yeah. So uh, what, what are your thoughts as far as your goaltending situation um, going into tomorrow's game? That's always been the question. And, and, and like we get our Facebook page of people, they hate. It's like, well, he allowed two goals on four shots. And it's like, okay, <laughs> but did you see the two goals on four shots? Like he had no chance on the one to Joseph. And yeah, so no, I think it's been tough, I think, for, uh, for any goaltender that's been with Erie the last couple of years because they if you go look at shots on goal it's it's tough for a goalie to get into the game and, and I've, I've asked whether it's Oscar or Devin and, and Troy here they just don't get a whole lot of action in, in trying to stay into the game it's it's difficult when you have such a lull between shots and flurries on your side and, and Erie has the puck for most of the game so um, I think it's that makes it difficult to be a goaltender for the Otters, and it's just the style of play and how successful they have been. Uh, it, it's, it's. I don't think Oscar, uh, Oscar Dansky worked out real well for well for him, and I think that's what kind of saw the end. And Devin Williams took over, and uh, but for Troy, no, I don't think there's. Uh, he's worked a lot to try and stay in games. I think the other couple goals that got in towards the end was Erie was just that comfortable with the lead at that yeah. point it was what 12 to 3 it's, so it's, it's great when you, when you can allow five goals but you're still comfortably yeah. ahead huh? yeah. <laughs> and that was i mean you talk about comfortable it was laid up on the couch and you know not even paying attention but no they yeah you, the minutes i think if it was uh, a closer game i don't think troy you probably give up those last couple goals in the end of the at the, at the final two but i think if you're putting all the goaltenders together and if, if you're looking at the teams as a whole and uh, Erie if goaltending side, I think they're probably on the bottom end out of the four, just with the, the talents on the other couple sides. So obviously we get down to the Otters and the Spitfires tomorrow night. Winner goes right to the championship mm -hmm. final on Sunday, so we are going to see an OHL team represented in the final. I know who you hope is going to be there, but uh, you know, what is your uh, what are your thoughts about tomorrow night? You know, because I, we all kind of expected Erie to be a top team at this tournament, but no one really expected Windsor to be this good. No. So you know, based on and I don't have the stats obviously in front of me. I didn't look back because I'm not a good broadcaster. But uh, Spitz and Spitz and Otters played each other four times this year. How did that series, season series go? What do you think about going into tomorrow night's matchup? No, it should be interesting because it will be the first time that. Both teams have their full lineups against each other. Obviously, with Windsor and all the injuries they've had all season long, uh, Erie did go three and one against Windsor. The only loss was opening night here when neither team had. It was just like yeah. plug in Much as many guys as you lineups, can. Yeah. yeah. So I think the Otters had one regular on the blue line that game, and uh, Jake Lore was playing in, in net for them. Um, yeah. So that game, we, the, it's hard to even count. And then yeah. they met. They met twice, I believe. It was during the uh, World Junior. Break, period yeah. so uh you never really had a look at what these teams looked like and it wasn't until the final couple weeks to the final week of the season or one of the last road trips for the otters or the thursday or friday here uh, that they won but they were one goal games yeah towards the end so i think uh i don't think we're going to see a blowout like the last two games for each each team on their last outings out um i expect it to be tight i expect the, the crowd to be into it and and uh, ready to go but as far as the game i mean windsor's playing it's impressive. You're right. No, a lot of people saw, saw them probably going 0 and 3 and in, in right out of the tournament. Yeah. But uh, man, yeah, a lot of people. I'm, you know what? I, it's it was. I've been they, they're the playing team for great. a long time, and I was scared yeah. going into game oh. one. And, mm -hmm. It's yeah, just a, I. Everybody thought I think St. John was the favorite from a lot of people. Yeah. To to come into this thing and maybe run the run the tables, but man, yeah, Windsor Windsor came in there was no rust over the last two months and 44 days off. The, <laughs> Now, is this, is this showing that the OHL is a, a, the best dom AHL. a dominant league <laughs> and the best in the CHL? That's the question. <laughs> That's the conversation in the And not, the only, just, no, not only just the OHL, but the Western Conference of the OHL. <laughs> no, that's, that is the conference or the uh, the conversation that, that a lot of the guys in the media room are having now. It's like it was going into last night. It's like, okay, so we've seen what Windsor they, you know, handled the Western League pretty well. They... they got past uh, the opening game against St. John and now 
Erie was like, well, what are they going to do against the, the Quebec champion? And then just blew them out of the water. And it's like, man, me. It, it, the evidence is there. The yeah. OHL maybe that's a period. What is it? Twelve straight wins by an yeah. OHL team now at the the Memorial Cup, and it's, it's going to continue. So, <laughs> well, obviously, you know the the Erie Otters uh, cornhole championship <laughs> yeah. is well underway. So we're going to let you get to that. Uh, and thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, talk to some Otters oh. Memorial Cup hockey with us. No, guys, my pleasure. I uh, hope I can stop by again. If you're here all week, so I'm hoping to be here all week too. There you go. Yeah. That's Aaron Cooney, voice of the Erie Otters, and of course, thank you for Mike uh, Turney Turnbull over here, the host of the tailgate, for filling in for Brian. Thompson. When we come back, we uh, continue with Day 5 of the MasterCard Memorial Cup on the OHL Fanboys Podcast. She's getting all Spielbergish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>